The album Jump Skunk is notable for its departure from political punk to metaphysical research and some shamanism mixed with folk motifs. Latov plunges inside himself, renouncing to civil defense as a group and as a general message. That is, it is no longer civil defense in the literal and figurative sense, but it still retains its hipster punk ideologies. Igor writes the album in different physical and mental states. It feels agonizing and heavy, with the body temperature of 40 degrees. Based on the legend, suffering from encephalitis, the focus of these things, these ideas, are clearly beyond human nature. One can describe this album with the line from the song Ivan's Childhood, the fly breaks away from the sticky paper, leaving its ugly flesh. Давай помогу. Я сама. А, сама, сама. Эх. Next comes an even more dismantled and unfortunate period. Yanka Dayakleva dies. What Igor Flotov feels to be his only love. According to some versions, she committed suicide. According to another, on May 9th, she was attacked by several men who threw her corpse into the river. Latov shaves his head after being hit by acid rain, cuts off his notably long, angry, side-shaved hair, and wallows in the misery of his loneliness. He used LSD, writes the album 100 Years of Solitude, the main subject of which became the composition Eternal Spring. You just need to listen to this album and everything will become clear. LSD is not a drug at all. It is a very dangerous thing, which is psychological in nature. We use it sometimes. I think it's healthy. But a fool shouldn't consume LSD. It very much expands the consciousness for a while, and is used to realize whether you're moving, thinking, and acting correctly or not. Whether you have the right outlook on life, or whether you're screwing up badly. Normally, a person has 2-4% to of their brain being used. Under LSD, 60% is believed to be in use. Children and fools, of course, should not be given it. You could go crazy, really. <laughs> Здравствуйте, в эфире Вести. СССР больше нет. Республики бывшей державы, за исключением Грузии и стран Балтии, их 11, учредили Содружество независимых государств. The collapse of the Soviet Union and later the shooting of the state Duma and the triumph of the presidential democracy and usurpation of power by Boris Yeltsin. Ты 
держаться extreme ultra anti-Sovietism because democracy like America was a kind of myth. The mythology must be embodied in order to be debunked, but the price paid for this is so monstrous. We are now at a critical point where the right-wing national capitalists are coming to power. And I believe that this is not such a bad thing after all, because it is a step forward. In this case, from the point of view of the interests of the nation and the country, because it will bring some order, and of course, I hope that the country will be restored to its recent borders. The poems and new songs begin to be written, again, punk songs, but already pro-Soviet and already anti-Yeltsin and anti-democratic. What begins is an even more immersive fascination with politics than before. Songs like Rodina, Robeda, and others are written. Latov grows his hair again and gathers his band Civil Defense then began Russian breakthroughs and participation of Siberian bands in this line of concerts in Limnov's party and BP. Receiving from him a party ticket number four. On December 19th of the last year in Moscow, in M. Gorky Palace of Culture, the convention Guide to Action took place. It was prepared by well-known personalities of the national avant-garde. One time you sang, I will always be against it. What does your participation in this action mean? Is it a protest in the name of protest? I have never been a nihilist. Indifference is the worst, most sinful, monstrously unforgivable thing you can think of. Uh, but we, both the Gajdanskaya Borona and our comrades in arms sitting here with us side by side on the stage, all of us have stood and still stand for the fury, sunny values that oppose lies, entropy and death. By the end of the press conference, a huge number of people had gathered at the entrance, coming from all over the country to see their idol after being missed for so long. People hugged each other and shouted, Latav is alive! Unfortunately, the hall designed for 800 seats simply could not accommodate seven to 8,000 people, and the concert was not held. The most fortunate were those who managed to get into the building before the Oman cleared the punks. They were able to listen to Igor's wonderful singing. В Чечне шла война, кровопролитность и жестокость которой была сравнима лишь с самыми тяжелыми месяцами Великой Отечественной. Но война шла где-то там, далеко за горизонтом дорогих магазинов и ночных клубов. И никого не интересовало здесь. Когда это началось в нас? Какая патока обволокла наши мысли? Какая паутина опутала рты? Мы перестали ощущать работу сердечной мышцы. Мы допустили пришествие вот этой животной идеологии, которая все сокрушительнее и опустошающе давит на нас, пока не сомнет окончательно. И ни правительство, ни армия, ни чеченские боевики, а наша отупляющая безразличие и жестокость вспарывают крыши домов в Чечне и врываются в больницу Буденовска. Во-первых, я солдат бы не посылал бы туда, вот. я поступил бы, наверное, как Жириновский, то есть я бы просто, он бы прерывал бы, 
Пожил очень мощную бомбардировку в течение, не знаю, нескольких там дней. Ну, то есть, ну, как американцы с английскими войсками по, по поводу Дрезда. a series of concerts and a strong surge of energy, Latov, from the events taking place in the country, begins recording new albums. Sol Nevrot and An Unbearable Lightness of Being from poems composed at the beginning of his political game in defense of the White House, State Duma, as well as helping Macknell record his own album. <laughs> By consuming monstrous amounts of alcohol and reaching the extreme point, he ruins his health, but achieves and demonstrates beautiful amounts of passion and experimentation. Freshly mowed Latov's garage psychedel with almost red army melodies blew away not only the roof, but also the tower. Due to the declared metaphysical militaristic metaphor, Besides the new rebellious content, the album served as a signal that the band was alive and on the move, which I personally was not sure of. From Moscow at that time, it seemed that Oberona existed in a rather phantom mode and a floating lineup, and in certain sense it was. The era of gloss, the internet, mummy troll, guleka, vodka, and the entertainment in Moscow was slowly beginning. Latov's seven steps beyond the horizon were revered, but admittedly, I wanted to take a step beyond some European border. If at the time of Russian breakthrough, Latov existed in a reality that was hostile to him, now it is more like a parallel reality. In the summer of 1997, he gave an interview to Limanka, where, in particularly, he lamented. Today, for the first time in my life, I got lost in the city center because of the tilling. The whole of Moscow is tilled. Some advertisements, some choppers. Gradually, Latov served his life from the political game and the NBP, going into his own inner universe. How would you comment on Igor Letov's interview in Sovetskaya Russia of March 7th this year? In it, Letov calls you a person suffering from vodism, says that we should take the red banner away from Limonov, etc. To top it all off, Letov signed an agreement on joint actions, where he calls on you to vote for Zyuganov. I understand this as an ordinary betrayal. Прекрасно хочу, чтобы все было хорошо у всех. У всех хороших? Нет, вообще у всех. У любых плохих тоже. 
чтобы ужасный маятник качался в правильную сторону почаще.